Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a recording now. Can everybody can everybody go ahead and put their their, their phone on mute? Yep. Thank you. I've got uh, too many people to mute. Um, okay, so this recording will be available um, on the practitioners tool. Um, so if you have any questions, you should be able to go back and, and reference it. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get started here. And all right. So uh, this is, as usual, uh, a brand new track terrace tool. Um, we've got, uh, sorry, I'm muting a few more people here. Um, we've uh, kind of redesigned it based on um, the, the feedback that we got uh, last go around. We've tried to make it easier for you all to communicate with each other, um, and also easier for you to communicate with um, with the the speakers uh, and the presentation owners. Uh, I think last year, uh, or excuse me, last summit for those of you that were that were track chairs, um, we kind of limited the communication uh, intentionally and had it go through us, um, and that was just an effort to try and streamline the process. I think we found that it wasn't exactly streamlined. Um, so we've tried to, to enable you all to have those tools of communication so you can talk directly with the presenters uh, to see exactly what it is they're, they're um, trying to do, and also to be able to offer um, constructive criticism and feedback. Uh, I, I think there has been a tendency for some talks to be submitted with um, potentially fantastic content, but they don't have a catchy title or, or their abstract isn't quite right. Um, so we're, we're hoping that uh, you all will be able to, to pluck those uh, diamonds from the rough, as it were. Um, so uh, another sort of big change that we did this year uh, is in the voting. Um, we're no longer allowing uh, people to, they won't be able to link directly to their presentation. Um, so we won't see the, the kind of heavy um, company push uh, for people to promote and, and vote for their session. Of course, people are welcome to promote it on Twitter, and we encourage that. Um, but what we're trying to do is is, is prevent uh, some of the, the waiting that has been done in the past, where just a, a handful of presentations get um, you know, thousands of votes and, and the rest get 15 or 20. Um, we've also kind of randomized things a bit uh, on the voting tool, um, more so than in the past. Uh, and we've got some, some weighted uh, randomization to help surface talks that um, may not have been seen yet. So that's kind of big picture stuff. Uh, we've also improved the speed of both the track chairs app and the, the voting tool. So um, we've got uh, still muting. Excuse me. Um, could you get somebody still not on mute and seems to be pounding on a keyboard. Yes, I hear that as well. So just uh, if everybody could just one more time check and make sure they're on mute, that would be great. <laughs> I know someone's out there. Um, okay, so uh, the track chairs tool will work in two phases. Um, so the, this first round, what we're going to do, uh, we've obviously closed call for presentations. So you all will have a chance to to run through the tool and look for anything that is obviously erroneous, a test that might have gotten through, or something that just doesn't seem quite right. Um, additionally, you'll have the opportunity here to suggest uh, changes if things are uh, in the wrong track. So that's the first phase, and Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you all will have uh, five days to do that, um, or six days. Yeah, we're giving you through the weekend, um, just knowing that you all have uh, day jobs that you're doing, and this is on top of all of that. So um, we are giving you through the weekend, I believe it's end of day on, on Sunday. Okay. Sunday the 24th. So, perfect. Okay. And then the, the second phase will actually be um, reviewing the, uh, the presentations again, ranking them, 
and uh, looking at the, the community voting average and that type of thing, uh, and then finalizing your, your track lists. So um, I'm going to go ahead and, and start demoing the tool. Um, this is the, the first page that you'll see when you come to the site. Uh, you will be able to select a category. You'll only be able to see categories that you're actually a track chair for. Um, I'm an admin, so I get to see them all, even though uh, I'm actually only currently assigned as a track chair to one uh, track, which is community building. Um, so I've set myself up uh, as the track chair on this for demo purposes. And the first thing you'll see is when I select community building, uh, I'll see my list of all my talks. Um, a new feature that we have this year is a set of filters. Uh, and these filters should help you stay a little more on top of what you have and haven't reviewed, uh, as well as look at your team selections very quickly, um, which things still need to be voted on, uh, which things were suggested to, to move uh, to your category or track, um, and then sort of your, your different uh, voting options. So I'm going to click on the first one here. Um, and you can see that we've got up top the title of the track, or excuse me, the title of the presentation, uh, who the submitter was, uh, the level category. Um, if I wanted to, I could request a category change, uh, and that would be right here. So if I wanted to suggest that this move to IT strategy, I could go ahead and submit that request. Uh, and we'll get into what happens there later. I'm going to cancel that for now. Um, and the way that I vote on these is I say yes, or I'm interested, or no thanks. And this kind of helps me uh, go through and filter down the line. So one of the big requests in the past has been a way to kind of flag presentations that you're interested in or that you just want to dismiss out of hand. Uh, so that you can kind of eliminate those from your, your group. Um, so we try to address that uh, and allow you a, an easy way to, to build your list um, and, and to be able to filter through these things. Additionally, uh, you'll see the, the community vote uh, average and the total number uh, voted on. And then here you'll see how many other people in within your track chair or within your track uh, have the same opinion as you, how many are interested, uh, how many have, have said absolutely yes, and then we've done a, uh, a popularity score, um, which is basically uh, yes is a total of, gives you two points, interest it gives you one point, no thanks gives you minus one, so your popularity score is an average of all those uh, for all of the people that have voted. Um, <clears throat> Down here, you'll see the information that people have submitted with their talk, uh, the abstract uh, problems addressed, and what attendees should expect to learn. Um, <clears throat> and then you can see who's speaking and <clears throat> the opportunity to email the speakers. Uh, if you were to email these speakers, uh, a ticket is created in Zendesk so that we can at least stay on top of those conversations. Um, but you're free to reach out to the speakers in any form you'd like. Uh, additionally, I can leave comments here for other track chairs to see. If I happen to email people, I'm not going to because this will actually send an email. Uh, uh, something will be noted in the, um, the activity stream here that says, yes, I emailed, uh, emailed these people. Or if you suggest uh, a category change, all of those things, pretty much anything that occurs uh, with, within uh, a presentation is recorded down here at the bottom of the activity stream. So when you're looking through uh, a particular presentation and you're wanting to leave some information for uh, another track chair, that's the place to do it. And then you can look over here and see that uh, there's actually a comment that's been left. Um, so this is a, a way for you all to communicate with each other, basically. Any questions so far on this page? Question, Jimmy, question. How many, how many sessions did you guys get this time around? Um, I don't, uh, I'm not sure if we're revealing that number publicly yet. Just curious. Uh, I was just curious, okay. 
Yeah, it was uh, it was a good amount, comparable to Austin, I'd say. Good. Great. So, Mike, one other question. I was trying to follow along by getting to the same URL you're at. Are we supposed to have access to this tool yet, or has that not yet been open? Not yet. No, we'll okay. um, we'll we're, we'll assign that and send that out in a separate email. Um, okay. Any others? <clears throat> so, the next thing that you'll see, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, Jimmy, uh, sorry to interrupt. Is there a timeline that you'll cover on, you know, uh, when we should be evaluating, when we should do the second evaluations that you alluded to earlier, things along that nature? Yes, uh, we will send out that timeline and, and communicate all of that uh, with you. Aaron Disney uh, and I should be working on that email today, I believe. Yep, that's correct. So expect expect all of that. Um, so I, I've made a, a few selections here, um, and now if I go over to selections, I can see what uh, I've chosen. Uh, so the, you'll be able to see all of your teammates, uh, all, all of your co-track chair selections, uh, as well as your own. And then you'll see here on the right, there's also a team list. So if I want, uh, I can add each of these to my team list. I can also change the ranking uh, of any of these for myself, uh, as well as change the ranking for my teammates, uh, or excuse me, for my team list. Uh, again, you can see here what's, what the status is of these, uh, if I've selected it, if there are comments on them, uh, and you can also link back to the individual Jimmy, talk. Jimmy, just a quick question. Yes. What's a team list? What do you mean by a team list? So, uh, okay, sorry about that. Um, so basically, as, a, as you make your selections, each track has a, a certain number of talks, um, and it kind of varies from track to track. In this case, uh, for community building, there are a total of 12 selections, and uh, any additional selections are uh, considered alternates. I think there are are anywhere from two to four alternates, depending, again, on the track size. Um, so when I make my individual selections, uh, I mentioned you'll see the, the list for the rest of your teammates in here. Right now it's just me. Um, but all of your team will make their selections, make their top 12, and then as a group, you'll get together uh, and discuss which, which tracks will make it to the team list. And so you can appoint one person or everybody can kind of make that suggestion and work on building the list together. But that team list is going to be what's finally submitted um, back to the OpenStack Foundation and what we'll use to build the schedule for the summit. Okay, thanks. Sure. So, so in other words, team list is actually the selections of the team. And then what is selections? Those are your individual selections. So those are so, the ones which I, as a track chair, said yes to. Right. I see if I mark it on the with the rest of the track chairs to build your team list. Sorry, say that again? No, I was just saying, and then as each track chair builds their own list, you then negotiate with the rest of your fellow track chairs on that track to build your team list, which is what gets submitted. That is correct, yes. And is the mechanism for doing that part of this tool, or do we communicate with other track chairs outside of this tool? Uh, you would communicate with other track chairs either through the comments on each of the um, each of the presentations, so you can leave comments. So I, I imagine I've marked a few extras interested here just so you can kind of see. So going through this, if I'm uh, looking at my selections, I say, all right, well, I've got three that I'm interested in. Um, you know, maybe I'm not so sure about this one. So I go down and I leave a comment. Does anyone have any thoughts? Uh, needs a better abstract or something along those lines, and I can post that comment. And then my, when I go to selections and other track chairs see uh, 
Uh, okay, this is in this is in my selection, but uh, and I'm going to add it to the team list. But there are some comments on it, so you can either communicate through the tool, or you're welcome to communicate with each other outside of the tool. Does that answer? In what you just did here by adding it to the team list, didn't you effectively make that the choice of this group? I did, but only for demonstration purposes. So it's and it can also be removed by anyone else on the team. So I, ideally, I would build my list, right, and and then um, once I once I say, all right, I'm interested in this one, I'm going to change it from interested to yes, and then I'm going to go back to my selections and see, okay, now it's added here. Now everybody can see what my list is and what my suggestions are. So each each of the um, each of the track chairs in your group can go through and see what everybody else has chosen. You can kind of compare and contrast your lists. Um, I can tell you that, generally speaking, uh, there tend to be a handful that everybody chooses, and then there tends to be some that, that each person kind of favors. Right. Um, so that's a kind of a good way to look at it. You can sort of look to see um, what the commonalities are, and that's an easy win, so you can all agree um, to move those to the team list, and then you can, as you said, uh, negotiate uh, the rest of the, the tracks or the rest of the presentations. It, it, for those, I mean, I, I, I have the same questions when I did this for the first time in Austin. Um, what makes it a lot easier, as Jimmy was just saying, is when you do this and you see the other lists that your other track chairs have made, it becomes real simple to you, you generally will populate i think your team list really quickly just by finding the the presentations that everybody has sort of moved to the top of their own list we did that with probably six to eight of our ten selections last time that everybody seemed to just vote on that presentation so it was an easy move to the team list Now, and keep in mind too that this this second phase of of selecting uh, putting things in the team list that's the the phase two part. So you have a little bit of time to to get used to the the tool, um, and then of course we'll we'll solicit the the call for votes. Um, so there's some time to to talk amongst yourselves as track chairs about what your goals are, um, and you'll also have a chance to look over all of the selections in your track um, before voting. So that you can hopefully get a good idea of, of what it is you want to select. Um, I I hope that uh, the changes we've made. I, I know for those of you that have been track chairs for a few rounds here, um, I think this is a dramatic improvement from the the track chairs tool in the past. Um, so so hopefully those of you that are that are new are are having a an easy time of it. Um, but if not, we have a whole team of people here to, to help out. Um, and answer questions. And then I can go over really quickly um, for change requests. If I were to request that this talk be moved to hands on workshop, for example, um, this is seen by admins. So this isn't something that all the track chairs will have uh, access to. But I can see here, um, and I have to be um, available to approve it. I I'm technically don't have the permissions right now, but I can see what's pending um, and if I want to approve it uh, for a move, then it would be noted. And then when I went back to hands-on workshops, I would see that this new track has been uh, is sitting there and has asked to be, to be moved to to my track. So. That's kind of how that works. So, so there's a confusion. If, if the first step is where we decide which talks belong where, then the ordering of that should happen after that. We shouldn't be doing that before, uh, right? Right. Correct. Okay. I mean, technically, there's there's nothing to stop you from from marking things as interested, uh, and in fact. I would encourage you to do so, but 
Um, keep in mind you're doing that without the voting aspect and, and that type of thing. Um, and you're you're like you're welcome to make a list ahead of time. Um, but but I would the goal of this first phase is really just to um, to put through uh, change requests for any track that you think is just misplaced, um, and also to, to quickly look through and, and make sure you don't see any glaring errors. Um, this this first phase has been to take an hour or two of your time, no more than that. Um, and I think the, the full track chair selection should maybe take five to six hours um, tops. So although it depends on how heavy the negotiations go amongst your, your fellow track chairs, I think. And Jimmy, that when we decide, if we decide we want to move something from, I don't know, community building to evaluating OpenStack, that approval ultimately comes from you guys, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. And and I I can't think of an instance where we've not approved it, but it's just mainly to prevent total chaos. Yeah, we had a couple go back and forth over the fence a couple of times when we did it for Austin, but they ultimately landed in the right spot. Okay. Right. Um, is there anything else I can cover for anyone at the moment? I have a question. Uh, this sure. all looks really cool. It's a nice improvement from, from last year. Um, uh, but uh, last year we did run into some, a little bit of buggy behavior with, with, this, with this system. So I'm wondering, how would you like us to report any, any issues back if, as, we're, as we're going through it? Uh, you can send anything to speaker support at openstack.org. It's probably the best the best one to hit all of us. Um, okay, and great. I'm, I monitor that pretty full time, um, and I'm happy to help with that stuff. And I we we took uh, several rounds of of feedback um, from the track chairs full from from both phases last time, and then kind of a, a wrap up as well. Um, plus. Uh, all the, the internal issues that we that we kind of went over. Um, so I hope that you will see a, a less buggy tool this time. I know there were some things that, that were really caused some problems last time and, and I hope that we address that. But it is software at the end of the day, so we'll see. Great, thank you. Sure. Now it looks like a nice improvement. Awesome. And Jerry, just when do you think we'll get the 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 green light to start moving stuff? I in? should I should have the uh, your permissions built out by no later than end of day. I would expect. Okay. Um, I need to send, I need to sync with Aaron on an email, but I would expect it out pretty quickly. Okay. So and then we have between whenever we get that and end of the weekend to do the the moving around. Correct. Perfect. So you also send the kind of a schedule when is a kind of deadline for various milestone, uh, the deadline yes. for moving the categories, deadline for identifying the box in agreement between yes. the chairs. Okay. Is there a way to add the people's email addresses to the uh, Etherpad, which was shared by Aaron? Yeah. Hey, yeah, sorry, I saw that in chat. Um, I was just going out to get the link. We can include that in the email if, if folks are wanting to use it that way. There also is the track chair mailing list if you're wanting to um, to send any sort of communication to the whole group, but I understand wanting to be able to just email those in your own track. So we will open up that etherpad and send the link around. Perfect, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I'm sure there will be uh, plenty of questions moving forward. Um, again, speaker support at openstack.org is, is the place to send that. Um, I appreciate everybody's time today and, and thank you again for, for all the work you're doing. Thanks, Jimmy. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, guys. Great.